here today. Maggie and I are here today on my studio floor to talk to you about gelatos. Okay, gelatos are some of my favorite um, tools for doing mixed media work. So I wanted to tell you why I use them so much and what do I use them for? I feel like every mixed media artist has, has their own go-to way of using gelatos. And so today I just wanna to show you my way. And I really only use them one way, which may seem kind of lame and uncreative, but they're so good at this one specific thing that they do that, I'm not sorry, it's just the way that I use them and I love them and they're such a great tool for this. So just let's back up one second. Who am I? My name is Karen Campbell. I am a mixed media artist. I've published a ton of art books and I love mixed media and I love creating tutorials on my mixed media YouTube channel. I also have a drawing channel here in case you're into drawing as well. Um, what do I like to make? I like to make mixed media art pieces that have like a distinct foreground to them. So I like to do a background and then I like to stick something on top, very distinct, either a dog or a girl or a girl or a girl and a cat. Okay, so that's just my style. So I like to make awesome backgrounds. The way that I typically see artists using gelatos is for background work. They're great to use. A lot of people like to push them through stencils. Um, they stamp nicely. They're, they're water soluble. I'll get to all their properties in one second. Um, but they're a lot of times they're used with baby wipes and like mashed through stencils. And a lot of that is just background work, uh, which is awesome. The way that I like to use them is just for one thing, like I said, and that's just for accentuating the shading and the tones in my acrylic pieces or they go on top of my acrylic. So I'm going to demo in two seconds. I just wanted to give you kind of like what everybody normally does and then what I do, but also let's back up to what is a gelato. A gelato is made by Faber-Castell, which is a producer of many fine art products. The gelato, I would not consider a fine art product. However, I would put it more in the craft category. They claim that it is light fast. Um, I, I know a lot of artists who <laughs> say that it is not. So I, I don't think it's a fine art product. Oh, weird hair things. Um, it looks like a little tube of chapstick or lipstick. It has a very blunt tip, as you can see. Um, and it comes in an awesome array of colors. I will also say that they have a metallic line and the way that the metallic line works in the way that I use gelatos does not work. So if you're gonna be using and following me and my projects, don't use the metallic versions, use the straight up kind of matte flat versions, like, like ordinary. Okay, and they're made up of like a very creamy, water soluble material, which means if you put this down on a piece of paper and you add water, it will kind of melt. Now there's a lot of other products on the market that act just like gelatos. There's um, Marabou Art Crayon is one that I like to use. Um, you can find Distress Crayons. There's a lot of brands, there's a lot of manufacturers. They all work very similarly. Some are, have better light fast than others. I believe the Marabou ones are. Um, but what I like about the gelatos in particular is they're not as water soluble as some of these other brands. And the way that I like to use them, which is over acrylics, again, I'll show you in a second. Um, and then I use a sealant layer on top. It blends them out like perfectly. So not too much. We don't have smeary McGee happening, which is what happens when I use my, my art crayons from Marabou. Um, Distress crayons are super not light fast, so I don't even use those anymore. But gelatos are like the perfect blendable product for me. And I love just the level of water solubility that they have. So those are all the reasons why I, I kind of think that they're very special. And now I want to just demo exactly the ways that I do use them. I think they're amazing for adding skin tone shading. And I think they're, uh, they're awesome for adding any shading on any object that you're doing uh, for your mixed media project. So just before I quit, I, I demo actual art things. Um, as you can see right here, like these are great examples. Um, for this piece, I just used a tinge of, so you pick out um, the colors that are in close to the shade of paint that you're using, just like one tiny shade darker, that's all you need. And then you can add it, blend it with your finger, go over it with your sealer. Done, magical shading, takes two seconds and it looks so good. And 
Personally, I like mixed media projects to be like fast and fun and get like instant success. And those gelatos allow me to have instant success. My faces look so good. I don't need to know how to blend my paints. Even though I do, I don't even need to bother with it. And it's like so easy and so fun. So here's another example. Again, this girl. So she's a very, very pale color and just using gelatos on her cheeks. We can use some, um, a different tone under here, around here. Now there's also a little bit of pit pen that goes on the sealer layer. That's part of my process as well. And by the way, if you want to know what this big process is that I keep referring to, it's called my mixed media hamburger system. You can actually Google that and you will see my whole video series pop up on that. But I'll also um, put the link in the description box for you if you want to watch my whole series of videos. But gelatos are the bomb and they're so easy and fast for putting over your acrylics to make shading. It's like makes such a big bang for your buck and it's so easy so let me demo a little bit more in, per in person so you can see what i'm talking about um yeah and i hope this video really helps you understand why gelatos and a cool maybe new way for you to use them that's more than just doing fun background stuff i hope this helps okay let's go to the demo ready maggie maggie are you ready maggie she's so tired because i just walked her all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just prep some faces for you because I wanna show you exactly how I use the gelatos to create my skin tone. So I thought, well, what the heck, while we're at it, we might as well make some little swatches of good combinations of acrylic paint and gelatos. <clears throat> this is just to show you my exact process. And also at the same time, let's color swatch, shall we? So I have four different skin tone girls. So the first one is like a really light, I believe that's Santa's Flesh. I like using craft paints for skin tones because it just comes out of the tube like the perfect skin tone. And then I put my gelatos on top and done. So here's four shades for you. Um, just depending on where in the value scale you like to hang out with your own girl drawings. And I just have like the classic set of gelatos. I do wish that there was one more brown in their set. I feel like there's a big jump between the chocolate, which is like super dark brown, and the next one up. Um, but even that being said, usually the paint color itself can kind of fill in some of the blanks in terms of on um, what colors you might need when and where so it actually all kind of works out just fine excuse these <laughs> these faces are like one second faces so don't laugh too hard at mine i'm just trying to doodle something in i was not even going to draw anything on here but i figured well if we're going to put shading in um it would at least kind of at least i could show you really quick kind of where i would put the shading but i mean these are like split second faces so don't don't laugh at me my i i can draw i swear so there's are just fun just to get us started with something so yeah so four things on this poor girl you can't even see the black on top of her skin it's so dark um and there's a really hard, i have a really hard time filming and also photographing um dark skin that of this level it's really difficult to see so i'm hoping that you can see what is happening in person it looks great it's just for some reason it doesn't photograph very well so my apologies for that but we have our four girls they all have different beautiful skin shades and we're just gonna go one by one um, i'm also gonna write them down for you so you can take notes it's super helpful um, this is kind of like classic white girl and the first shade is peach it really is the skin tone itself um, the second one is guava it's like the that's the shade i'm putting on right now it's like the perfect if you're too scared to shade and you want to like start really slowly you can just use guava and then melon is the third shade so with each face and each skin tone that i'm doing i always like to have three shades of gelatos and this is kind of like my go-to philosophy or for like shading anything it could be like a lamp i like to have excuse me i like to have different um shades and values for, for whatever it is i'm i'm um, shading so that it just creates more drama and dimension and just reads better all around so I'm just adding a little bit of white. Um, that being said, I'm use, I just always get carried away with my, my white paint pens, but you can use white gelato as well. And I end up going back and doing white gelato as well. And that is a great way to highlight. It's a, the white gelato is like a must in your arsenal because you can put it on cheeks for like a little bit of highlight and it makes it like a soft glow when you blend it in with your finger. So don't forget the white. So on this white girl, we have peach, guava, and melon. And if you put them all together, 
over a nice Caucasian shade skin, it looks awesome. So I'm literally writing this all down for you. So if you want to take notes and write them down with me, it's a great thing to kind of keep in your resource library when you, if you like to do a lot of mixed media girls, because I know I do. So, so fun. All right, so the next girl has kind of like an ivory-based skin tone. Um, it's more yellow than pink, which is the last one. Um, there is this color. Caramel like is that is sort of my starting paint color, but you can, caramel is a color of gelato that is that same yellow tone. So if you're starting with maybe a lighter tone, uh, like a still yellow base, but a little bit lighter than this is ivory, then you can do your first shading with caramel. Then do the butter the butterscotch. That's what you're seeing me lay down right now. And then chocolate is the last one. And there is a big jump between butterscotch and chocolate. Um, so you can just kind of tread slowly. But really, you can just do this one shade and you're fine. Um, but those would be the three that I would be using. So, it, and again, I try to blend them up with words with my fingers so you can see how one really just like gradates to the next like really nicely. And I go back and I add the chocolate um, afterwards because that is the next shade in line. If you wanted to add more drama and go one step further, you would do chocolate as a third. And there I am using the white. And again, it just makes like a really nice like highlighted glowing section. <clears throat> All right, so for the third face, this is like, um, this is probably the darkest I would paint as a base because again, it just becomes really difficult to see. So this is, I'm doing the chocolate. And again, if you could only pick like one shade to use for shading, I would just do the chocolate and be done. But you can have a lot of fun actually with a skin tone because um, it is so dark, you can actually experiment with colors of tangerine or butterscotch or mango and all of those, I, I added all of those together and it really, especially with the tangerine, is like orange, it really created a very lovely mix of colors that they all really blended out very nicely. Now the light color you see that I just kind of pla placed everywhere is caramel. That is sort of the base color of this, the skin shade of the girl before. Um, so you could use that for highlights. Instead of jumping to white on the dark skin girls, I recommend using just a lighter shade of gelato. Um, that white looks a little sometimes it's a little too much so using just a light shade instead um, produces that nice kind of natural glow as much as you can have <laughs> natural glow on like a mixed media girl but you know what I mean a uh, more realistic I guess you could say so I'm there I'm putting down chocolate as the bottom butterscotch is next then mango uh, tangerine and caramel although actually I labeled them the tangerine and the mango are up are um, backwards so the tangerine I add in later on that's the orange because I just love it. You can see it on her neck and you can see the places that I put it by her eyes. And I just think it's really, so I added it right there. I just think it's really a great addition to that, like that line of skin tone. So yeah, don't knock that orange. It's definitely something you could consider. And the caramel is the lightest one, like I just said before. So there's the most kind of variation for that one. Again, I apologize. This one's a little bit hard to see, but bear with me. Um, it's definitely usable and a great another value scale. It's sort of like the one that we just did, except we're going to be adding black to this since the base is so dark. Again, if you were just to choose like one dark shade to do all the shading, I would pick black because it's sort of next in line on the value scale. But then what's really fun when you're starting out with a dark, deep base is that then you can build up values with your lighter colors. And Gelatos also works amazing in this respect. So instead of just doing black and being done, you can now come forward with more of the highlights and dimensions. So this I'm using um, caramel and butterscotch to bring out these highlights. And again, there's the tangerine, which is just yummy, yummy, yummy. But if you can bring forward the places on the face that you would normally bring forward, so those are the places that are sticking out, like your chin and your nose and your cheeks and the eyelids, those all get this lovely shade of caramel. And look how everything, look how the dimension starts to really form on her face. So it's just 
it's kind of magical what happens on these dark skin girls when you start using um, the lights and the darks. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I hope you will give this a try and doing, you know, if you, if you're like me and you did white girls for like 10 years, switch it up. It's really interesting to see and it's fun to make different characters that aren't all the same all the time. I just finished a 15 week series on my Karen Campbell Draws YouTube channel doing, uh, drawing women from around the world. And we did all different skin colors. It was so super fun and I learned so much my students did amazing and by the way just published a book on that it just came out yesterday yesterday as I'm filming this so yeah you can go check that out that whimsical it's called how to draw whimsical women of the world and I got to highlight the work of 54 of my students so that was pretty amazing you guys some of you are probably watching this video right now I'm so proud of all of you and just so grateful to have so many awesome people drawing along with me each week it was pretty amazing so for the value scale skin tone chart on here for this dark skin girl, we're going to start at the bottom with black. Then the next deepest shade is chocolate. And then I popped in the tangerine, that orange, because I just love it. Um, butterscotch is that sort of like yellow ochre color that you see. And then the caramel is the lightest one on top. And so again, you can kind of see the whole kit and caboodle here. Now, before I leave you with this video, I'm not quite finished because this isn't my whole process. My whole process, if this was a real, not just a, you know, not just a value scale exercise, which I'm showing you right now, but if this was a real mixed media project that I was doing, I would like to show you kind of what I would do next to really um, just show you the, the real application, the real way that I use this. Because the uh, gelatos come up a lot in my Facebook group and just online and people a lot of times have questions about like how to use it and again I've adding the chocolate there to that little value scale um, and like I said a lot of people use them for just making backgrounds and I, there's just so much more that you can do with them so I'm going to show you a clip of a lesson this is from my mixed media magic book it's the video lesson that goes along with one of the projects in there and that will show you exactly the next step and what kind of ties all this whole process together so I just wanted to show you a project um, just so you can see exactly kind of how it all comes together. So this is again the dragon girl, dragonfly girl project from my mixed media magic book. And as you can see, I have that same kind of yellow, just very Caucasian-y color, <laughs> honestly, base. And then I'm going in with those same three shades that I showed you with on my first Caucasian girl. And I'm just layering them in order. So the lightest color, as if you remember, was peach. Then I'm doing her cheeks first with guava. Just ever so slightly. And then um, when I want to pack a bigger punch, I'm going to use the melon. Now this was before I realized that distressed crayons are not light fast at all. Although I have to say, because I also shaded with pit pens on top afterwards, the shading is not diminished in any way. And I did this project back in 2017. So it's been fine. This, that color by distress, um, by the distress crayons are is a great skin tone as well so I used to mix and match these up quite a bit so if you have some around awesome and it's not like they've faded like I said but I also use another product after I seal everything so just do keep that in mind I don't know I this could have faded underneath and but because my pit pens shading is still on top it's okay do you know what I'm saying so there's more products going on than just the ones that you're seeing that come on later on Anyways, I'm using the same exact process, however, for shading. So I'm putting it all around. I'm using my finger to blend it all out. And then I'm using the white, and I could have used white gelato here. Again, nose bridge, chin, cheeks to, to create a really beautiful soft glow. Then I just go in and I finish up painting her eyes and her lips. And then when I have things, that's the melon, that's that nice dark red. Then I take Mod Podge and I sweep it over the whole entire thing. And that is my whole process, pretty much from start to finish in terms of how I use gelatos.
After that Mod Podge layer dries, as you can see, I actually just go in with my pit pens and finish up all the details and do some more shading with my pit pens. I'm going to link right here to a playlist on your screen. You can actually click right on it if you're on your phone or your computer, and it will take you to my entire hamburger layering system series, and you can watch the whole process from start to finish to learn about all the different things. But I hope this video was super informational for you about gelatos. Again, if you want to learn more about the whole system, just check out the link.